Every year it seems like we see more and more really good compact cases. Well, these compact cases need compact graphics cards if you want to get a ton of power into a small box. Zotac did a good job with their 1080 and 1080 mini line. And those were previously the smallest GTX 1080s you could find. But now Gigabyte has stepped up and created the GTX 1080 mini. Today we're going to check it out. So here we have the box, nothing too special here. Normal Gigabyte box with a nice little eye design there, GTX 1080. And the back, just a normal box. Let's crack it open. Let's see what's inside. Let's see the card here, obviously. As well as Quick start guide and the driver disc. It doesn't seem like there's anything else in here. That's it. For a 1080, the packaging is pretty bare bones. So it's pretty light, all things considered. It's got a nice matte black front here and the fan, as you can see. I thought that they might put a bigger fan on this version. This is kind of the same shroud and cool design that you see on the 1070 Mini that they have, which is a pretty good card. But nope, same fan, same shroud style. It looks Better in person, definitely. I thought it was gonna be shiny plastic, but it's a nice matte black and a little orangey, reddish orange there. So on the bottom, we have nothing here, just the connector, around back nothing, a little exhaust. And on the top, you see your eight pin connector, your fingers for SLI. And for connectivity, we have three uh, display port, one HDMI, and of course, that still DVI port I wish that they would get rid of. But it is a pretty large card in terms of height for a mini ITX or smaller compact card, but it's nice. The back doesn't have a back plate. It does have this little piece here. It's some sort of a heat sink, it looks like. Um, looks like there's a little thermal padding there, but no full back plate. So here we have the Gigabyte 1080 compared to the MSI Air ITX 1070 and the Zotac GTX 1060 Mini. So these are three of the more popular Mini ITX cards. You can see this is a smaller uh, 1060. It's going to be a little louder. Uh, obviously, this can kind of fit inside of the 1080. You can see there's clearly overhang in terms of the size of how tall it is. So this is gonna be significantly taller, but it should also offer better cooling properties than the more compact you know, mini cards that you see in the market. Now, when you get to the 1070, it's a little shorter at the top, barely though. I mean, we're talking barely, just in this one cutout section, it's a little taller. These, This portion here, the back end, is pretty much identical. So you're looking at a pretty much uh, identical card. If you have this card or a similar size card, this is going to be very familiar to you. Having a really compact card is great, but if it sounds like a blow dryer when you're trying to play games and it's super distracting, what's the point? Luckily, this card isn't too crazy when at an actual use. Uh, I found that the fan noise was manageable. As long as you are in a case that has decent airflow, it shouldn't have to ramp up to 100% to cool the card. Unfortunately, there is no idle fan mode on this card, unlike its little brother, the 1070, which pretty much has the exact same shroud build and cooler which does have a, a idle fan mode, this one doesn't. That's an odd emission, but it is what it is. Maybe with firmware updates, we can get that in the future. So I took some sound samples. First, you'll hear the card idle, then under a full gaming load, then you'll hear the fan at 100%. Obviously the card was very loud at 100%, I mean super loud, but fortunately it wasn't something that I saw in practical use. The fan never really went above 70 to 80%. You can obviously control your fan curve as well in the software, so you shouldn't have really any reason to hit that. One of my biggest concerns when picking up this card was the cooling performance. It has the same exact shroud and cooler as the 1070 Mini that Gigabyte put out, and I was really concerned that it wouldn't be able to handle the heat created by a full 1080. Luckily, that's not the case. The card has completely manageable temps. At idle, it was only hitting around 32C. During gaming, it was only hitting 74. So it's really manageable. Those are good temps, especially for a card this powerful and compact. It really raises the question, though, 
why there's no idle fan mode at 32C idle, I, I really don't see the reason why they didn't include that feature. Now on to the section I know that you all have been waiting for, the benchmarks. I was able to get a modest overclock on this card. It's really not the most overclockable card. There is a power limit on this of 105%, so you really can't go too far, but I was able to push it to 1939 megahertz on the core clock and the memory clock. I pushed it up 100 megahertz as well, so I did get a decent little performance bump, so all the results you will see are with that overclock. My test system consists of an i7-8700, as well as 32 gigs of Corsair Vengeance DDR4 RAM at 3000 MHz, and a 960 EVO for a boot drive. The card was placed in my LZ7 with all the side panels off, so it created sort of a hybrid open air case. Up first, we'll take a look at some synthetic benchmarks, then we'll slide over to real world gaming benchmarks. Overall, I thought performance was really good. It gives you everything that you'd expect from a 1080. Now, if you're looking for a super high-end, top-of-the-line overclocker, this is not the card, obviously. But it does give you a little wiggle room with the overclocks, and the Aura software does a good job of making overclocking easy. You can monitor and track all your stuff as well in there, too. While I don't have a way to test the power draw of the card itself, the system never exceeded 300 watts while gaming. Overall, after spending a couple weeks with this card, testing everything, gaming performance, rendering, all that good stuff, I have to say that it is a really good card. It's not as fully featured as some of the other cards out on the market. There's no backplate, there's no idle fan mode, the power limit can only be increased by 100 to 105%. So there are some things that you have to consider if you're looking at this card, but overall, it does give you the full performance of a 1080 in a super compact package. Now, depending on your case and your case airflow, it may be very loud for you. In my test environment, obviously it wasn't that loud. I didn't see the fans spinning up too much. Uh, they were totally manageable, but if you're running in a really compact case with poor airflow, I could see that being an issue for some of you. One of the best things about this card is that it seems to be sold for a round of MSRP. I picked it up for $539, brand new a couple weeks ago, so that's in the middle of the mining craze and it still seems to be priced properly. So you can get really good performance for the proper price. You're not getting gouged there. If your case has space, I would probably still stick with the Zotac 1080 Mini or 1080 Ti Mini, but if you don't have the space and you really need an ultra compact, the most compact 1080 on the market, then this is obviously the only option, and it is a good option. I'll drop links below for the article. If you want me to add any more benchmarks, I can always add them to the article, so just leave them in the comments and let me know. I'll also drop a link for the actual card. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you like the video. I'm Jay, this is Tech Everything, and I'll see you next time.